your man, Louis T. Walk to the command post. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. I, of course, am your commander in chief, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. So the commanders add more young talent to the staff. And, you know, I think this is becoming a very healthy mix of veteran teaching coaches and then young guys who are energetic, bring some life and some youth exuberance to the staff. Cliff Kingsbury himself is, is not an older coach. Uh, Tavita Pritchard being brought back, another young coach. He's 36 years old. Adding a guy like David Rye to the mix. You know, 43-year-old coach Sharif uh, Floyd, who we're going to talk about here today, along with David Rye, both being added. Sharif Floyd, ex-player, uh, career ended early due to nerve damage. He's only 32 years old, right? So, and I think a lot of times when you get these young crop of players, they seem to do better. I think they relate more to the younger coach. So a guy like Sharif Floyd to me is excellent on that defensive line. And so I think that's going to be a really good fit here, right? So I'm excited about these hires. We're going to talk about the roles that these guys are going to potentially fill. Uh, more news came out as well surrounding uh, the rest of the staff. And so we're starting to fill in all the, the blanks, right? There's a few positions left. So we still don't actually have a defensive line coach. We'll see if they retain, if they decide to retain uh, Jeff Scanina or not, uh, because they're bringing in Sharif Floyd as an assistant defensive line coach, not the actual D-line coach. So we'll see if Jeff Scanina remains on staff as a defensive line coach or not. So we still haven't filled that position. Um, we, we found out information about the wide receiver position. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. But we're still waiting on news regarding the running back position. Uh, obviously, running back coach Randy Jordan left for Tennessee. Wish him nothing but the best. He was awesome when he was here. He survived multiple regimes, which tells you how highly thought of he was. But uh, they're going to be replacing him. Still don't know with whom yet, but we'll find that out, it seems like, here in the coming days as a lot of news has been trickling down as they continue to fill out this staff. So let's head over to the social uh, man media maneuvers and um, see what's going on in the Washington Commanders universe so adam Schefter broke the news this morning uh about uh david rye um and so the, the Schefter tweet reads commanders hired former bucks assistant coach david rye as their tight ends coach reuniting him with cliff kingsbury whom he worked with in arizona and so i wanted to give this tweet even more context give the david rye hire even more context so sam fortier i thought did a really good job of encapsulating that so his tweet reads, Washington hired former Tampa Bay senior offensive analyst David Rye as tight ends coach, sources confirmed. Uh, Rye played at uh, quarterback at Iowa from 99 to 2002. He worked with Cliff Kingsbury at Texas Tech in 2013 um, and Arizona with some years in Green Bay in the middle. So uh, to give you some more background on David Rye, this is a guy that really has never been an actual tight ends coach. So this is an interesting hire from that perspective. But if you can teach receivers, and that's what his real calling card has been throughout his career, is he's really been a guy that's coached the receivers. Um, he's been an outside, I, I, this is the first time I heard of something like this, and um, an outside uh, receiver uh, assistant, right? That was the first time I'd heard of that. Uh, but he was that in Green Bay at one point. And, um, then he was able to then get into that uh, wide receiver room and uh, was the wide receivers coach there in Green Bay. And so um, he's been a wide receivers coach. Um, he was a wide receivers coach in Arizona and you know, coached Larry Fitzgerald and guys like that when Cliff Kingsbury uh, was in Arizona. And so he's got a lot of experience with the receiver position. Uh, but if you can coach the receivers, you can coach the tight ends. Um, it's a little different because, you know, tight ends block a little bit more and things of that nature. So I want to see how he's going to do here. But when you're a quarterback, and this is the thing that makes me worry less about his hire. When you're a quarterback, you have to know everybody's position. You got to know what everybody is doing out on the football fields, which is why a lot of times you see backup quarterbacks becoming head coaches. They make the best coaches. Why? Because they got to know what everybody does. And so they're very knowledgeable which is why you see guys like Dan Orlovsky on television excelling, right? Because 
you know, may not be able to play at a high level, right? But they know the offense. They know the game in and out, right? And so you see a lot of those guys going to be very successful, Doug Peterson, et cetera, et cetera, uh, Frank Reich. You know, backups usually are, make the best head coaches, I believe, uh, at least. But in any event, um, uh, I'm excited about David Rye. He's on board. I want to see how he does. Again, another position where I feel like we could definitely use an upgrade. We had a really good tight ends coach about three years ago, two or three years ago. He decided to retire, and it seemed like the position – Never really got back to that level again. It was Logan Thomas's first year, 2020. He was outstanding. And I think he stayed on another year, 2021. And then I think he ended up retiring and didn't think the position really ever uh, got to that height again. I don't know. He might have retired after the 2020 season, whatever the case may be. Um, I, I want to see what David Ride does in this particular Spot and and then uh, uh, Commanders also made another hire today, uh, assistant uh, defensive line coach slash quality coach uh, Sharif Flor- Floyd is being hired as their assistant defensive line coach. So the Cowboys uh, hired Sharif Floyd, gave him his first NFL gig last season as a, uh, a defensive line assistant slash quality control coach, which is usually how you break into the industry as a coach is with quality control. And so uh, he broke in, got his feet wet. Um, I think he must have impressed Dan Quinn because Quinn now brings him on. He's going to continue his growth as a coach. um, And and we'll see how he does in that role. I just like the fact that he's so young, right? Obviously he wants to teach. Uh, Obviously he wants to be a coach. And then he, I really feel like he's going to relate to Deron Payne to John Allen. Again, he played in the SEC, did Sharif Floyd. He was a former first-round pick, just like those guys. He played at the University of Florida, did Sharif Floyd. So um, he can relate to those guys, and they can share stories and things of that nature. And I think he's really going to gel and mesh well with that young group of defensive linemen. We got a really young room of defensive linemen. I mean, Jonathan Allen is the elder statesman of that group. And, and what? how old is he, 28, 29 years old, somewhere in that neighborhood? So... Um, I really think this is going to be a a slam dunk hire there. And then um, adding on to that, uh, Nikki Javala, who had the the tweet about Sharif Floyd, also added in, the commanders are keeping Bobby Ingram as their wide receiver coach, per sources. Um, Like Tavita Pritchard, Ingram was well-liked by the players and did draw interest from other teams. So uh, Washington is holding on to Bobby Ingram as they held on to Tavita Pritchard. And so... um, Another guy that was well liked, as you can see by the tweet, and um, I it's it's hard to gauge the receivers last year. It really truly is. It's not fair to Bobby Ingram that you know Terry didn't have the breakout year that we were expecting. That Jahan was a non participant in several games last season. That Diami didn't take that massive step. Curtis Samuel was outstanding last year. Uh, he was probably the only guy that maybe exceeded expectations. And it's not like his numbers were through the roof, but, you know, with all the balls that we thought were going to Terry, Jahan, and company, um, I thought Curtis might have been the guy that might end up being the odd man out. And instead, he ended up stepping up and ending up being one of the guys that really stood out amongst that group. But um, Bobby Ingram's coming back. I got no issues with that. We'll see how that all kind of meshes together. Um, Cliff Kingsbury um, putting together a group on his side of the ball that he's comfortable with. And, and David Rye is an example of that. And so um, we'll see what ultimately happens on the offensive side of the football, because all of these guys have to work in unison with one another in order for this to work, right? All of these different coaching styles have to mesh in order for this thing to go in the direction that we want it to go, which is in one direction forward, right? So, A lot going on with this Commanders team right now as they continue to fill out the staff. But um, I'm very, very um, hopeful that we'll get some finality to this this week and we can look at what they've done as a whole and be really optimistic about it. I I am right now. The only hire that I think we've really been down on was the Bobby Johnson hire. And again, I'm going to give it an opportunity. People have been sending me videos about him talking about you know, 
alignment, which is the buzzword of the uh, year thus far for the commanders is alignment. Got to be in alignment with one another and be aligned, right? Aligned vision. And he talked about that in a video way back. Um, I've seen videos that kind of highlight him as a, a offensive line coach. I watched another video when he was in Buffalo and when he had first got there and how he was impacting the offensive linemen and things of that nature. And uh, so you're just getting to know him a bit. None of that matters to me. I, I, all I care about is production, right? He's got a body of work. He is a teacher. I mentioned that already, but you know, it didn't go well for him last year. And in, in order to erase that sour taste that that left in everyone's mouth, you got to go out and you got to put together a top notch unit this year with the talent that you're going to be provided with, whether it be from last year's group draft and free agency, or it's just the draft in last year's group, or it's a combination of all three. I don't, I can't see it just being free agency in the group from last year. It's obviously going to have some mixture of the draft in there as well. So uh, we'll see whatever they provide him with. We'll see how he does with that talent and whether he's able to get it to play at a, at a very high level, which is what we need for whomever they end up putting uh, behind center, whether it's uh, one of these young quarterbacks, Sam Howe, a veteran they trade for, whatever, right? We will see. The likelihood is they're going to draft a young guy. So, And, and just a, a side note, while we're talking about young quarterbacks, I've started my process. So the, the, the schedule is going to look as follows. Um, Friday, you're going to get your first draft prospects one-on-one video. And it's going to be on... Um, it's going to be on Jaden Daniels. I've already watched him. I've finished my evaluation on him. Then the next video is going to be on Drake May. That's going to be released on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you're going to get Caleb Williams. And that'll be released on Sunday, right? And then we'll be done with the top three quarterbacks. And then we'll start to, to move and matriculate our way through the rest of these quarterbacks. That second wave, the J.J. McCarthy's and the Michael Penix Jr.'s and the, that group of quarterbacks will be the next guys that we will start to talk about. And then uh, we'll then switch gears. Once we go through all the quarterbacks that kind of register that, that are noteworthy in this year's draft class, we'll then shift gears, start talking about other positions of note, and then we'll go from there. Right. And then we're off and we're running and we'll, we'll just go wherever the, the fl rhythm and flow takes us until it is draft time. So, um, in any event, that's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T. You know what this is. Post up. Take command. I look forward to chopping it up with you guys um, tomorrow for the Louis T Network podcast. If any more news comes out about the team, obviously, as I've always told you, you'll see this face up in your space. But until then, see you for the podcast Wednesday. If not, I'll see you for the command post live on Thursday night. See you then. Have a good one. Louis T. Network.